Moscow, August 1939, a peacetime festival in honor of the youth of Russia. This is Red Square, flanked by the Kremlin, St. Basil's Cathedral, and Lenin's tomb. A sort of combined Labor Day and ring around the Maypole. From 17 republics covering one-sixth of the earth, speaking over a hundred varied languages, from athletes, folk dancers, musicians, farmers, students, young scientists, factory workers, and little Misha and his gang. northern blonde that Hitler would like to be. This is Jive, Mongolian style. In the groove with the Uzbeks, under a warm sun, young men and women celebrating creative arts. This was Moscow at peace. This is the way of life our Russian allies are fighting to preserve. Fascism, which had enslaved the German people, now threatened to enslave the world. It is November 7th the Soviet 4th of July. Marshal Timoshenko rides out to address his troops. The marshal, a farmer's son from Bessarabia, began in the army as a private. He has climbed every rung of the ladder. Fighting man speaks to his fighting men. Men of the Red Army, the independence of our country is in your hands. The safety of our people, of our homes, our factories, our great farms and dams, these are in your hands. If you're called on to use your weapons, use them well. Always remember what you are defending.
women of the Red Army, transport pilots, nurses, auxiliaries. They've all since proved that they have remembered. Russia has been attacked. It has been at war since June. A ruthless enemy, backed by the armament factories of occupied Czechoslovakia, France, Belgium, Austria, backed by millions of brutalized young men, drunk with success. A juggernaut army of fire and steel which has never received a setback. This army is approaching Moscow. And Moscow citizens go all out for defense. Barrage balloon. This is our city, our street, our playground. If we are defeated on the outskirts, we will stop them within the city. homeless by the Nazis come to Moscow as they would to a mother. Tank traps. Life goes on. Not life as usual. A more intense life where streetcars run with an earshot of the guns. Where citizens line up before a wooden desk in a park, presenting themselves volunteers for the most dangerous duty in modern warfare. These are the guerrilla fighters, the partisans who go into enemy territory. They build factories, bridges in peacetime. If necessary, they will blow them up now. We Americans know them. We use them in our own war for independence. Stern faces, brave faces. They expect no mercy from the enemy. Their home will be the woods. Their allies, night and surprise. Their password, liberty. Yes, they've had training before. They know what they're doing and why. And there are nurses with them, brave women, and they know what they're doing and why. Goodbye. Good luck. Mothers, wives, daughters are too busy to cry. They too are defending their city. Let me work fast, faster. Let me do my work well. This is for me, for mine, for us. The Nazis continue to advance. Hitler had sworn that he would enter Moscow on November 7th. Eighty-five Nazi divisions were held at the city. They advanced but over a landscape carpeted with Nazi dead. And on November 7th, it was not Hitler who stood in. Calm, grave, without oratory, while the advanced panzers of the Nazis were 12 and a half miles away, the Soviet Premier spoke to the people of Moscow. The whole world is looking to you as a force capable of destroying the hordes of German invaders. A great mission of liberation has fallen to your lot. Be worthy of this mission. The war you are waging is a war of liberation. 
a just war. Death to the German armies of occupation. Soldiers march out of the square. They're not returning to warm barracks or bound for home. From here, they're going direct to the front lines to defend their city. What does it take to defend a modern city? Soldiers, yes. Patriotism, yes. But they're not enough. It takes a staff of leaders, trained, resident, free of panic. General Zhukov, in charge of Moscow's defense. complex products of the home front, of science, of skill, of labor. It takes detailed knowledge of the arts of defense. Patriotism alone never stopped the Nazi tank. attacked. Monstrous ears catch the deadly hum of Nazi bombers. Throughout the raid, men and women quietly load tomorrow's shells. 